Brighton Palace Pier for the last part of my walk so I can navigate in Brighton home. This last bit is quite long, but it's basically a straight line. There's no directions to tell you. But I thought I might tell you some of the things you'll see en route. So you know it's worth doing. After the Vokes Railway Centre, you can cross the line and come down onto here, the English coastal path. So that'll bring you even closer to the sea. So I think that's a good idea. That's what I'm doing. Now, it's up to you if you think this is cheating or not, but the Vokes Railway runs from right beside Brighton Pier all the way along to here, right near the marina. So you could take that for the first bit. The world really is your oyster at Brighton Marina. There's shops, bars, restaurants, cinema. I feel I've only just started, so I'm just to carry straight on going round it on the Undercliff path. Still the English coastal path. Just passed a sign that tells us it was a mile and a half we walked from Brighton Marina. It's two more miles to Rotting Dean, and I think I'm right in saying that path up the cliff there to the top road is your last chance to get out of here. If not, you're walking two miles. Just so you know. I've discovered there actually are some steps off of the Undercliff path, and they are here at Oving Dean where there's also a little cafe and some beach huts. With the right combination of clouds and the beach, you can actually get some really dramatic photos here. Just past Rotten Dean, where of course you could just cut off up to get some refreshments, have a look at the shops. I'm staying on the Undercliff path and I am carrying on to Salt Dean Lido. And if you remember, that's where I started this massive adventure and that will mean that I've done the whole trip. So there we are. I have officially done it. I have circumnavigated Brighton and Hove on the Brighton and Hove way. Hooray! Yeah!